All right, welcome to chapter nine, conic sections. Today we're going to start with the circle. Uh, if you remember what conic sections are, you take what's called a double napped cone, uh, intersect it with a plane, and you get four different types of shapes. You can see on the first one here, um, if you just go straight across it's a circle, that's what we're going to look at. If you do it at an angle, you get an ellipse. Uh, you cut it more than an angle here on this third one, uh, you're going to get a parabola. And in the fourth one, when you cut kind of both sides of the cone, you get what's called a hyperbola. So those are going to be our four conic sections that we work through. The first one today is going to be the circle. Um, first off, just some kind of information. Um, the what's called locus is a collection of points that satisfy a certain geometric property. So all of these things that we're going to be talking about are going to be satisfying, um, are going to be a collection of points and they're going to give us those four different shapes that we just talked about. So the first one, once again, is a circle. It's a collection of all points X and Y that are equidistant from a fixed point HK. Well, that fixed point HK, as you can see here, represents the center of the circle. All right, And the XY is all those points around that center that are equidistant from it. So instead of just giving you the equation or asking, you know, do you remember what the equation of a circle is, let's just kind of take this... Um, this moment right now to kind of really just identify how we find the equation of a circle. So the equation of a circle is the distance from the center of the circle, which is HK, and any point on the circle XY with a radius of R. So what I want to do is we want to find the distance, which represents the radius. So we're going to say that the radius is equal to, and this is using the distance formula that you learned in geometry, which we also know as Pythagorean theorem. So the distance is equal to the square root, and you take the difference of your x value, so that would be x minus h, and that would be one side, so that would be squared, plus the difference of your y values, which would be y minus k squared, and as Pythagorean theorem, that's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, but since it's just equal to r, uh, that's why we have the square root of all that. So how do we solve this? How do we you know, kind of fix this to make this look a little bit nicer here? Well, if we go ahead and square both sides, so we're gonna take everything and square it. Now remember that r is just being squared, so that's radius is squared is equal to. Now we're squaring the square root. The square root's over everything. So that cancels each other out and just leaves you with x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And right there is the equation of your circle. So just like that, that's where that's derived from. So not very difficult to kind of derive it, understanding that it's the distance between the center and any point on the circle. So there's our formula. Let's go um, kind of rewrote this here. Standard equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Understanding that hk represents the center of the circle and then the r represents the radius. Now it's not r squared, r squared um, is the radius squared. So the R value um, is being squared. So just remember that. Um, all right, let's take a look at example number one. All I want to do is write an equation given a center and a radius. So if you want to pause it for a second and go ahead and do that on your own, you can. Um, all we're going to do is take this information and use the standard equation of a circle. So here we go. We have X minus H, H being the center. So that's H K the x value of the center, uh, so it'd be x minus 4 squared plus y minus, now it's y minus a negative 1, so y minus a negative 1 would be plus 1 squared is equal to the radius squared, you square the 25, and you, or sorry, you square the 5 and you get 25, so r squared is equal to 5 squared, so r squared is equal to 25 and there's the equation of your circle. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is now I'm going to give you an equation in the correct form. I want you to identify the center of the radius and then go ahead and graph it as well. So here we go. The center is h which is 3, k is negative 2. Once again it has to be in that form of y minus. So it would be y minus a negative 2. And so that's why the k value is negative 2. And the 16 is r squared. So the radius is 4, not 16. So r is equal to 4.
All right, so we have the center and the radius, so we're just going to plot the center at 3, negative 2, and the radius is 4. So we're just going to count 4 units. Since it's a circle, we're going to count 4 units in all directions. Uh, 4, let me label this, 3, negative 2. So 4 up, 4 to the left, 4 to the right, and then 4 down. And then that will give you the equal distance that you need to draw a circle. Well, that didn't work the way I thought it should. Let's try that again. There we go. So there's your circle. Okay, so we've gone from writing equations to taking the equation and graphing it and identifying. And then kind of the last part of today is what we're gonna, well not the last part, but um, kind of the next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you an equation that's not in standard form. We wanna go ahead and take it and write it in our um, standard form by completing the square. These are uh, binomial squared, so when we deal with binomial squares, we need to complete the square. So uh, we've already done this before, this isn't the first time we're doing this, but we're going to do this now to write an equation, not to solve. So here we go. But we want to get this in the correct form, so I'm going to write some things down here which I think will be beneficial for a lot of you. So I'm going to do x squared plus 4x plus blank. i got to complete the square. But then I also have my y squared, so i got plus y squared plus 10y. plus blank. So I'll make that a double blank just so we know they're, they're different values. And then that plus 20 is just kind of in our way, so we're going to move it to the other side. we got negative 20, so it's equal to negative 20 because we had to subtract plus blank and plus that second blank because if you add something to one side, you got to add it to the other. And so I'm going to switch colors here just to kind of keep things in order. So that's our first perfect square trinomial, or it's going to be our perfect square trinomial, and there's our second. So we complete the square. Just a quick reminder, to complete the square, you take half your middle term, and you square it. So half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So you add a 4 there. If you add a 4 there, you have to add a 4 there. Same way with the second one, half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. So if you add 25 to complete the square, you got to add 25 to the other side. Now you can factor both of those perfect square trinomials. x plus 2 quantity squared will give you x squared plus 4, x plus 4, plus the half of 10 was 5, so that would be y plus 5 squared. Once again, you factor that, you'll get y plus 5 quantity squared. And then it's equal to, on the right hand side, we get uh, negative 20 plus 4 plus 25 would be equal to 9. And there's your equation uh, in standard form of a circle. Let's identify the center. That would be at negative 2, negative 5. And the radius is equal to the square root of 9, which is 3. And that's it. That's all it asks for. So. Let's look at another one, maybe a little bit more challenging in, in terms of completing the square. Um, if you want to give this one a try, maybe listen to me for just a second before you get started, though. When you look at this one, um, you have these 4s in front of the x squared and the y squared. Now, if they're not the same, then it wouldn't be a circle, so we'll talk about that later. But in this case, they're definitely going to be the same because we're talking about a circle. Well, we can't complete the square with those values there, so we have to get rid of them. There's kind of one of two ways that we can do this. We can, you know factor them out, okay, but in this case, they're both going to be the same anyways, so let's just go ahead and divide everything through by 4. Now it is going to create some fractions, but that's okay. So we got x squared minus 1 half x plus blank, there's our first trinomial, and then we have plus 
y squared, 6 divided by 4 would be 3 halves, plus blank, there's our second trinomial, and then the negative 5 has to be added to the other side, but it is being divided by 4, so that's equal to 5 fours plus blank, and then plus our second blank. So it's still the same, but you can tell there's fractions involved here, but we can't ignore the, the fact that there's fractions and, and decimals and things in problems. So we're going to complete the square. We're going to do it the same way we did on the other one. We're going to take half of our middle term. Well, when you take half your middle term, when you divide by 2, it's the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So we're going to take half of our middle term. Instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to multiply by 1 half, and we're going to square it. So that would be 1 fourth squared, which is 1 16th. Now some of you are going to want to do decimals, and I'm going to tell you not to, because when you're dealing with fractions and, and square rooting them, it, you can square root a fraction and get an exact value where you can't with a decimal. So let's keep everything in fraction form. If you use your calculators to figure out some of this stuff, that's fine. Just make sure you change it back to a fraction. And we'll do the same thing on the y. We have 3 halves. We want to take half of that and square it. So that's 3 fourths squared, and then that will equal, if you square the 3 and you square the 4, 9 sixteenths. So you add 9 sixteenths to both sides, and I'm supposed to add 1 sixteenth. Okay. So what is this factor to? Well, because the numbers are not so nice, um, you know, you might struggle to think about how you can factor. But if you go back and look at the last problem, this number that's always as the, um, this term here, this is always half of your middle term every single time. Half of t uh, 10 was 5. So that value is always comes from your your starting point in, ta in terms of taking half. So what was half of 1 half? 1 fourth. Well then my binomial is x minus 1 fourth. Factors that square to give you, factors that um, add to give you negative 1 half but multiply to give you 1 16th. So x minus 1 fourth squared plus what was half of 3 halves? 3 fourths. So it'd be y plus 3 fourths squared. And remember, these signs, why this one's an, a minus is because this was a minus. Uh, why this one was a plus was because the 3 halves was a plus. Remember, this is the factor of those trinomials. And then what does this add up to? Well, 5 fourths, you can do this on the calculator and you write it out, but 5 fourths is the same thing as if we find a common denominator. Um, 20 sixteenths. So we got 20 sixteenths plus 1 sixteenth plus 9 sixteenths. Uh, I believe that gives you 30 sixteenths. Okay. And so there's the equation. Yes, 30 sixteenths can be reduced, but I'm going to leave it like that because when I go to find the center, it's going to make it a lot easier. The center is 1 fourth comma negative 3 fourths. And your radius, because your radius squared is 30 sixteenths, when I go to take the square root of it, I get r is equal to the square root of 30 over the square root of 16, which is 4. If I would have you know, reduced that to 15 eighths and took the square root of that, I would have had to do a lot more to simplify and get that radical out of the bottom. But I noticed that the perfect square of 16 was in the denominator. Uh, which made it more sense just to leave it that way. So the radius is the square root of 30 over 4 for this circle. And so there's another example of where circles, you know, maybe in Algebra 2 we were a little bit no nicer in the sense of maybe looking more like this. Well, now we realize that everything's not always nice like that, so we got to be able to do problems like these as well. Um, there's mostly, basically going to be two parts to each of these conics that we do. There's going to be the part where you have to write the equation um, and identify the information. And then the other part, um, well actually I should say three parts. The part where you have to write the equation like we did here. The part where you're going to have to be doing the graphing. And then the third part is the working backwards. So I'm going to give you some information. And you need to write the equation of the circle based on this information. Once again, if you want to try these first, that's not a bad idea. Example 5, write an equation of a circle with a center 5 comma negative 3 and tangent to the x-axis. Well, the 5 negative 3, what, you know, what are the things that you need for a circle? Here's your equation. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared 
is equal to the radius squared. So what things do you need? Well, there's really two parts. So you need the HK and you need the radius. Alright, well the nice thing is the center of 5, negative 3, you have the HK. So the only part you're really missing is the radius of the circle. Um, so how are we going to find the radius? Well, what does this tangent to the x-axis mean? Maybe this goes back to geometry a little bit, but sometimes getting a nice little sketch of what's going on here will help you out. So the point 5, negative 3 is somewhere down here. That's the center of the circle. It's saying it's tangent to the x-axis. So tangent to the x-axis, tangent means that it's going to cross this, this circle at that one point and, and not, um, it just touches it, it doesn't cross through the, the circle. So what would that look like? Well, um, if it's tangent to the x-axis, it's going to be right there on the x-axis. This distance from here to here represents the radius. So if it's tangent to the x-axis, it's just going to touch it and then um, not go through it, though. So therefore, the radius of this one is that distance from the x-axis, which is somewhere in here, to the center of the circle. Well, if this is at 5, negative 3, then what would that distance be? Well, this is at, you know, um, I guess if you wanted to count over, this is at 5, 0. So then the distance from 5, 0 to 5, negative 3 has a distance of 3. So now we know the radius and we know the center of the circle, so we can write the equation. x minus 5 squared plus y minus negative 3, so that's y plus 3, squared is equal to the radius squared. Well, the radius is 3, so the radius squared is 9. And there you go. All right, let's try another one. Last one here. Uh, write an equation of a circle with endpoints of a diameter negative 4, 2, and 6, negative 8. Once again, on these problems that you're working backwards, it's not bad to get a sketch as to what's going on. So we have a point here at negative 4, 2, and we also have a point you know, somewhere down here at 6, negative 8. Well, we need two things. We need the center and we need the radius. Well, we know that the center is the midpoint between these two points. So we can find the center by finding the midpoint. So to find the midpoint, it's basically the average of the two together. So to find the midpoint, or in this case, we'll just call it the center because that's what it is. All right, you're gonna take your x values, negative four plus six, and divide that by two. And then you'll take, um, your y values 2 plus negative 8 and divide by 2 and that's how you're going to calculate the center or the midpoint and so we get a center of 2 over 2 is 1 negative 6 over 2 is negative 3 so 1 negative 3 is your center alright so we have the HK now we need to find the radius. Well, this one we're going to have to use a distance formula. Um, we could do the distance between the two endpoints and then take half of it, or we could just do the distance between the center and one of the endpoints, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the center and find the radius using the distance formula. So the radius is equal to the square root, and I will do um, the difference of your x's. So I'm going to use this point right here. Um, and the center, so these will be my two points, this one and the center. So x minus your x value, that's what you're looking for, so I'm going to do negative 4 minus 1 squared, that's the distance of your x's, plus, now your y value, 2 minus negative 3, so that's 2 plus 3 squared. So what is that going to get us? Negative 5 squared is 25, uh, 5 squared is 25, and so the radius is equal to the square root of 50. Now, a lot of you are going to go ahead and, and want to simplify the square root of 50 because there is a perfect square in there. But remember, we're not necessarily interested in the radius. We want to know the radius squared. So if we take this and square it, 
then that means that the radius squared is equal to 50. And that's the number that you're interested in. That's what you need to write the equation. So if you do simplify the square root of 50, you're just really creating more work for yourself. Maybe not knowing it first. So the answer to the equation of this uh, information would be x minus 1 squared plus y minus negative 3, which is plus 3, squared is equal to the radius squared, which is 50. Not the square root of 50. The square root of 50 would be the radius. We want the radius squared, and that would be 50. All right, so there you go. Um, that is circles, first kind of section of conics. Um, one of the things that you will need to do also on this is one of the things I'll have you do for all conic sections is take a picture of a circle and post it to the discussion board on Schoology. Uh, the picture needs to be something from your home, something out in nature. Um, it cannot just be a picture taken off of Google. It has to be something that you take a picture of and you will post it on there. Make sure you identify what it is that you're taking a picture of. So when you post the picture, once again, just make sure that you are identifying. Uh, it's a circle and it is this. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know in class. Thank you.